how does this website work? You just oh, it's fucking the easy. You click spin. on the big green spin button. Grant, introduce the show before. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to Netflix Roulette with Aiden, Connor, and me, Grant, the guest star. <laughs> Anything else I should say? Or... Yeah, Alright, so basically we got this website here and you hit spin and it'll just basically pick a random movie from whatever series you put on there. Yeah. Do we have all the series set up? Amazon, Disney Plus, HBO, Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime, Prime, HBO. Amazon Pro Plus, did you say? That's everything. That's everything. It's everything. Oh, and it's got stars. Everything. Spin the damn thing. All right, we're hitting spin. Future, Future 38. 38. Uh, an American agent from 1938 travels through time to hamstring Hitler, transported to the year 2018. He hoodwinks, hoodwinks hooli, hoodlums and infiltrates dot dot dot. Uh, let's see. It's, uh, now, if you click watch now, on. you'll figure out what website it's on. What, how yeah. Amazon? It's on. Fucking Amazon. Alright, Future 38. Let's do this shit. Oh shit. <laughs> what a great start. What a great start. <laughs> oh god. What a great start. It's only 75 minutes, the old Scooby Doo standard. <laughs> Okay then. Then let's go watch that. Let's get it. Let's let's do it right now. All right, let's try one more time. Yeah. All right, guys. So we watched Future Thirty Eight. Grant, what's the plot of Future Thirty Eight? So basically, uh, in nineteen thirty-eight, the some scientist guys for the War Department decide to make a, a weapon to try and kill Hitler before the war even really starts. So they come up with a thing that gains power over time, and then they send someone to the future to grab it and bring it back to the past so it has enough power to kill Hitler. And that's that's it. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson shows up, and he's important to the plot. There's a woman there. Neil deGrasse Tyson lovely. harasses you in the movie theater before <laughs> it starts, even yeah. though you're not in the theater. Today, I introduce you to a film that everyone thought was lost forever. A movie that gets time travel right. We should make it an ASMR video where we just like Neil dub over him, ASMR. whisper, just be like, so this is the movie, guys. Neil deGrasse Tyson harasses you at the movie theater. We now look back at a film that looks forward to today. Roll projector. This is a lost Neil film. deGrasse Tyson spoils Star Wars. Okay, Neil the deGrasse theater. Tyson. How do you lose the footage to this? They're like, 1938, they're like, wow, we made the first movie ever in color. Beautiful color that looks like it's 4K with a weird aspect ratio. And we shot it at 60 frames per second, even though it looks like ass. But this is a lost film. Very expensive film. Uh, very exciting. Very good movie. You're going to really like it. It's like Neil, dude. Shut the fuck up. I just want to see the movie. Neil, Neil talks for like two minutes. Right, and I think you're like, I know they paid for the Neil deGrasse Tyson endorsement, but you think at least if Neil deGrasse Tyson was endorsing it, maybe it'd be all right. Right. Or something, but this movie is absolute dog shit. <laughs> uh, the comedy was not yeah. existent. It was just like... Well, there's they... two jokes. The first joke is that everyone talks like a fucking retard because they had right. they talk like they're from the thirties. Yeah, but they overdo it so much. Too. Yes, and the other joke is dick puns, blowjob, mostly sexual innuendos, not necessarily dick. There's the strap on one. She's like, we call robots bowjobs in the future. You ever had? And then a he's like, have you ever had a bowjob? You ever had a bowjob? And he's like, I've had many bowjobs. And she's like, not blowjobs, bowjobs, womp womp, and the audience laughs. Effectively, and then the commercials is... roll, and then the Big Bang Theory logo comes back up. <laughs> and it's... The little atom has the molecules move mm -hmm. around it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think the primary problem with this movie is, while I didn't mind the framing, like the whole framing device for this movie could work, but they couldn't think of jokes other than be like, let's talk fancy because it's the 30s. And it's not the 30s anymore, so we don't have to deal with censorship. So we are just going to make a bunch of sex jokes, because that's all we can come up with. Yeah. And it's really fucking obnoxious because of that. It's like, okay, we get it. You guys can make jokes about blowjobs and strap-ons all day. But you're not really making a plot. And also, the movie felt right as you go. If that makes sense, where it's like, here's a funny scene idea. What if I put a bag on my head and, like, get almost suffocate? 
Or here's another funny <laughs> scene. What if the Jews come by and shake us up a little bit? What if we go to a restaurant and there's hologram menus? What if there's lesbians? What if there's black people in a 1930s? What if there's a construction worker lady dressed like Bob the Builder? <laughs> what if? What if? <laughs> what if? Well, That's, those questions are fucking answered. It's very meandering. Like, uh, three-fourths of this movie is entirely inconsequential with him just kind of like wandering around New York and being like, wow, this isn't like it was in the past. Right. It's like, okay. How are you going to make a 75-minute movie and yet it meanders for 45 of it? Yeah. And you have Neil deGrasse Tyson harassing your fucking <laughs> ass in the movie theater for the first 10 minutes. A lot of the scenes just kept dragging on and on. Right. And it, it may have gone by quick in like real time, but to us it felt like forever. It seriously felt like it was three hours. You get the idea of every scene within like 15 seconds and then it just keeps going. I feel bad because like someone made this movie. Someone had to do the costumes. Someone had to call people and make sure they were on set. Well, all the costumes and set decoration and shit was really basic. It was like, oh, what is like a future thing? He wears like a suit, but instead of wearing a blazer over his suit, he's wearing like a puff uh, northeast draft jacket or whatever. The North, whole North and Mountains. They, yeah, and then the whole thing is framed like it's 1930s movie that they just unearthed like a found footage film. Right. And that's part of the joke. See, I don't mind when this... Shot in a 1-1 one, one aspect ratio. 1 by 1.1 1. 1 aspect ratio, which is awkward. And I mean, I could live with it, and I would actually, like, not mind the idea of, like, a film shot like then. So you're pretending effectively that you have, like, the giant cameras of the 1930s, but then they occasionally throw in, like slightly more dynamic shots like close-ups and stuff if you're shooting a 1930s movie you have to have it like far back and you have to have it pretty much mounted if you're going to shoot in the style yeah when you go halfway it just makes you look lazy either shoot it like a fucking movie from modern day or shoot it like a old school 1930s movie and follow your actual motif instead of like cutting away to other shots that they couldn't achieve in the 1930s like, so much of this is like, what if the 1930s tried to do 2018? But it's just a lot of shit that you would actually see in 2018. Yeah. Handheld you know, recordings, and... you can tell by a little bit of a sway. They have... Yeah, right. They have iPhones, but they also still have phone operators. Like, the iPhones turned out entirely the same in this alternate future. Except for the fact that you have to pull out a cord and talk to an operator. It would be really Why? convenient if this Why? was actually <laughs> made in 2018. Because a lot of the stuff was already there in 2018, so they wouldn't have to worry about designing a fake phone. But thank God it was shot in 1930. Right. Mm hmm Thank you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Neil deGrasse they... Tyson, like, so this film was shot in 1930, Look, and he's over the back of it, he's like, what's up? I thought, like, the internet ticker and stuff was kind of clever. <laughs> like, there were clever ideas throughout this movie, just everything was poorly executed. I thought the scene where they were at the safe was kind of, like, in f smart or something. Like, there was some smart stuff with the time travel, but then you actually sit there and think about it, and you're like, okay, but if they opened the safe earlier, so it already would have been in there. Basically, like, there the was, money like, part. Notes, notes and money. The guy's like, I want $10,000, say, and he's like, okay, I'll just put it in there in the future, and it'll be fine. But you would have been shot right there, so you never would have went back to the past. And if you were able to go back to the past and put the money in there, then you never needed to pay the guy. Let's talk about bootstrap paradoxes. I mean, we could talk all day about time travel and every That's fucking time travel. Everyone, everyone in this though, movie vapes, too. It's a closed loop, and yes, everyone right. vapes. At one point, they just have some guy sucking on a cheap pen vape that they shoved into a cigar that right. was the the it's, scene where they go to the ticker place with she the puffs on a cigarette that they shoved like a fucking loon cigarette into i mean that was that was kind of cute i guess you could have like the effects and kind of like be like oh you don't need to light these cigarettes like i get what they were going for like everything's a vape now right that's the future and that is the future. it's the fucking phantom pain cigars where you just you get your eye droid and you and it goes, whoa. Yeah, I mean, the main character, like, for the first... Just the look on your autism. The look on your face. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, so I just kept going. 
<laughs> but, but the fucking main character quips like a Marvel movie for the first like ten minutes of the movie, and then after yeah. that he just acts like a bumbling tard the entire time. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, what did you guys think about the twist? The, the twist. twist that the, oh, old, the twist where the old guy is him, that you which called, was the most obvious twist ever. You called five minutes. He's in. like, wow, this is my right size. What a well, coincidence! He, the, Even before that, the we knew old that. guy has. A suit and jacket conveniently fitted for him, laying on the couch exactly where he wakes up, and then the old guy stares at him like this when they first meet, and I was like, oh, I already figured it <laughs> well, out. Well, on top it's of true, that, she did. just shits on the old man for the first, like, five minutes of the film, despite the fact that the old man does nothing. And then there's one scene where the old man, 80 years after... Or, okay, not eight, 75 like years, 60, at, 70, whatever the fuck, however long. They're good many years, it's literally like, 80. It takes place in 2018. Oh yeah. So, 80 years so after this to took like place, 110. And <laughs> okay, this yeah. old man's supposed to be like 110 years old. He is, isn't he? He says exactly shit. verbatim what one of the villains say to throw him off so they can distract him and get away. Well, they but again, this brings up the paradox. If he didn't know what that was in the first place, then the first time he would have been killed, then he never would have become an old man. Yeah, it's true. So in the original timeline, he must have done some Jason Bourne shit to get away with everything. Because it's just, they just dos ex machina, deus ex, deus ex ma, whatever the fuck ex machina, <laughs> that shit, so that no matter what, oh, me and the future figured it out. So any conflict this movie has is gone. <laughs> it's true. Since we know the old man is him, that conflict's gone. I mean, I get it's supposed to be a comedy, but it's not funny just to say blowjob a million times and talk The second they open the safe, the tension of the film is gone. It didn't have tension in the first place, but once they open the safe and he starts reading letters from himself written in the past, you know he succeeds. Yeah. Right. And then it's over. Yeah. You know, GG. It G -G is. Hitler. Hypothetical tension ruined. There wasn't any, because I didn't give a shit, but... Hypothetically. I don't think... The they... tension was a paradox this whole time. It was there until they went back in time and then made it not there. Well, what this person tried to do was essentially do Danger 5. He just did a really damn shitty job about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't... Here's my advice to upcoming filmmakers. If you're not funny, don't make a comedy film. <laughs> it's that fucking simple. <laughs> Great advice. That's literally all it would have taken. He's The guy who made this movie is not funny, so he shouldn't have made a comedy film. <laughs> he actually had, like, a decent enough idea to make, like, an indie, you know, like, make, like, a 1938 noir detective homage. You can still, you know, I wouldn't expect it to be the best, but when you're like, okay, this is a comedy, so I don't have to be good enough at writing to do tension. <laughs> well, the problem is, if you're not able to write tension, so you make it a comedy... But you can't write jokes either. You probably shouldn't be writing movies. I'm sorry. This movie sucked ad. Anyway, so that was Future 38. Now let's watch our next thing. Um, we haven't rolled anything. We'll s let's see what our next roll is. What's this? It's a piece of, it's a piece of paper from the, the safe vault the, from the past. Wow. Well, what does it say on it? It says Future 38 is going to be a bad movie. Yeah. Okay, we've already wow. reviewed Future 38. What else does it say? Uh, it says <laughs> the next thing is going to be Drake and Josh. One of the episodes, the theater thug even. <laughs> the theater thug? Okay, wow. Okay, well that's well, quite a wild really... prediction. How are we going to know for sure? I don't believe well, that prediction we... the slightest. That's we... fucking ridiculous. We should that's all, all roll and find out. Let's roll. It's impossible to believe that Drake and Josh theater thug is going to be our next review. <laughs> Dude, if the next review is Drake and Josh theater thug. I'm gonna start a Pornhub account and suck my own dick. This piece of paper also says Bambi 2 is gonna be up next. Okay, well, that's ridiculous. There's no Bambi 2. Been fucking retarded. There's no Bambi 2. <laughs> that's enough of that. <laughs> that was quite the skit. <laughs> that was quite the skit. Yeah. Wasn't it the best movie we saw tonight already? It was fantastic. <laughs> or terrible. I don't know what I thought of it yet. On to okay. movie number two. On to number two, movie number two. Uh, we're gonna spin it, and we will... Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. What? Yep. Drake and Josh, dude. <laughs> so now we have to do the second layer. Right. This is, see, you gotta understand, Grant? The second layer. We gotta decide what episode of Drake and Josh we're watching. How many episodes are there? Probably 30, a lot. wait, it's right under. 54 episodes. Where did you see right that? up, right above the picture. Oh, 56 episodes. Oh, 56. I can't read them far away. 
56. So we're watching Drake and Josh. Episode 34 of Drake and Josh. Okay, now I gotta figure out what episode 34 is. <laughs> okay. Okay. They're here. Six. Off to a great start. I like... We got something short? Yeah, well that means we have to do four. 20. It's a lot of this is getting cut in here. The theater thug. Drake oh my god! What? I'm I the theater thug! I literally was thinking in my brain it was gonna be theater thug. That is one of the most popular Drake and Josh the memes. The second I saw that, I was like theater thug. Mm -hmm. Like unso that's literally like an I unsolved guess that's mysteries. That's what it is. We're watching dude. Drake and Josh. Shooting a video on unsolved <laughs> mysteries. Oh, are you excited? Dude, you ready? Thug's yeah, lit, I love, bro. I love that episode Drake played and Josh. all the time. People I, are gonna think this is rigged. I love fucking when I grow theater up, thug. I want to be just like Drake. Drake Bell. I want to be two hundred thousand dollars in debt. Washed up child star who was All in right, live action. Alright, let's watch Theater Thug. Fairly Odd Parents movies. Unsolved Mysteries parody. I think it's. Okay. It's like let's go watch movie. it. So, we just watched Drake and Josh, uh, episode 14 of season 3, Theater Thug. Aiden, tell, tell me what Theater Thug was about. Theater Thug is an episode of Drake and Josh where Josh is featured on FBI's Most Wanted. Uh, he plays a character, he, he's in the reenactment playing the theater thug, a guy who robs theaters, and everyone thinks he's actually the theater thug and beats him up for it. That's basically it. How did the episode end? And the episode ends with the actual theater thug coming to Josh's theater where he works, which is part of the Drake and Josh lore, which we won't get into too much. Josh manages to knock out the theater thug and then gets arrested by the cops so the theater thug gets away because they think he's the theater thug. It says original air date, 2006. So this was post 9-11. What, what do you think, how do you think that influenced the whole series the was post 9-11. Right, all post 9-11. <laughs> theater thug is an allegory on racial profiling. They, they I'm just going to put that out there. I was really shocked a... at that scene where... <laughs> Josh injects a bunch of fentanyl, and then the police kneel on his neck until he dies. It's that really might be shocking. A little, a little too epic to leave in. Yeah, you. But you can't leave that in. Well, man died of a drug overdose. It's not my fault. Uh, I didn't force fentanyl into his system. Uh, Anyways, Dan the Feet Man Schneider uses this as a way to. Get the message out there to defund police. <laughs> Full 14 years before it became popular. Uh, the police come, they racially profile Josh repeatedly. Um, Josh even pretends to be black. They see through his disguise and still can tell he's white, so they racially profile him. It's an interesting episode concept where this white man is basically being... Dan Schneider was very progressive. Not only was he on the, the front of the police brutality scene, but he also, uh, he, he was, he was also, at, he, he was one of the earliest maps. He was it, part of the LGBT community well before that was developed. Jesus. Fighting the good map fight, you know. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there were a couple feet jokes in here, but there were no feet featured, which for Dan Schneider, and episode, the only foot joke rare. was directed at men. There was no little girl feet in this one. We're looking at you, Mr. Schneider. Well, if you look at Dan Schneider lore, you would know that it doesn't. He doesn't really discriminate. He likes all feet equally because there's definitely men feet in these shows too. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's pretty gross. Feet are a feet are an open theme within Schneider's work. Yeah, it's true. Schneider loves Much like the feet. Tarantino. It's true. He's a true Except artist. Like a, it's like a child molester, pedophile version <laughs> of Tarantino. At least Tarantino, you know, makes good movies. Makes good movies and likes of age feet where legal feet well legal feet. no there's that one picture of him sucking on the toes and that foot is a very small foot uh, that is a very small leg and a very small foot how old was the chick in um yeah. hollywood once upon a time in hollywood where well, she they said she was 17 okay. it, That's still in, in the canon of the movie she was 16. But, but the actress... In 20. real life, the actress... I think she's actually like 22 or something. Okay, so that's not as creepy as like a 12-year-old. Regardless, sport. I think we've dwelled enough on... <laughs> on as feet fetish. Moving directors. past the memes, uh, the episode is... Okay. I mean, I didn't think it was entirely unfunny. I wouldn't go so far as to call it funny, but it's got an okay premise for a kid's comedy sitcom. Oh yeah, we rolled two kids things for this one. Yeah, we did. 
I mean, we rolled one so far. But, I mean, the premise is okay. The, I mean, for what it is, the premise is fine. Yeah. I wouldn't go out of my way to call it funny. I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it, but it's not that bad. I mean, for a child's card, uh, kid's sitcom, sure. it was fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why it got memes so much. Because there's the, whoa, just take it easy line. And then people really love that. I didn't even realize there were memes about this until you told me. I didn't the either. Memes. I'm not aware of that meme. I mean, Drake and Josh is a bit of a cult status. I remember liking it as a kid. This was an episode that was on a lot when I was a child in syndication. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen it quite a bit. I'm quite aware of the theater thug lore. Uh, it's a fine episode. Me and Connor are big it's fans of Unsolved Mysteries and the FBI Most Wanted. Uh, video that they show the the episode that Josh is in has a rip off of the Unsolved Mysteries well, theme in it that plays really low key. Here's a clip. It's clearly inspired. <laughs> That's gonna get you guys taken down off YouTube. It's clearly inspired it's by uns- one second clip. It's fine. I'll I'll dispute it with the just review clause. Crop it. It'll be fine. Crop it really close. No, you just put it on for like two seconds. You'll be fine. But yes, they do do like the Unsolved Mysteries theme song. The show's clearly inspired by Unsolved Mysteries, where it's like you can help us catch a thug. Uh, one thing that I thought was particularly weird is the production of this show. They're like, you're hired to do the show. You're hired to do the show. It's like, Just they not do set. casting? Yeah, yeah like, yeah, on like set, they hire Drake. The day Bell. that they're up. filming, they have all their cameras and lights set up, and Drake walks onto the set, and they're like, you're hired. Like, they didn't already have a guy to fill this right. role And yeah. they hired beforehand. Josh, like, They hired a Josh days, the day before, like, or, like, the day two before, two days before. Days, yeah. When they're doing location scouting, they're like, "You look just like the robber. You're gonna be the guy." He didn't even look like, like the robber like that two minutes. That's why yeah. I think it's an allegory for racial profiling. <laughs> what else? The guy was played by whatever that kid's kid, kid from Corey meets world or whatever. Corey meets the world. Boy meets world. Boy meets yeah. world. Yeah. It was one of them. World, so. He has a distinct voice. I don't know, but it's it's just weird to see him, you know, out of his uh, comfort zone. I was just out of his comfort zone. Boy Meets World is basically like a 90s Drake and Josh. Yeah, you're not wrong, actually. Not necessarily. It's like a child sitcom. I guess I just feel bad genre. that I feel bad that he ended up on Drake and Josh. Kind of reminded Drake me of Josh is big show, Halloween kinda. 6 with Exhibit. Oh, where yeah. Exhibit hosts the reality show. He was oh, like that right. guy. Was it Exhibit? Or was it uh, it was Buster Rhymes. Oh, it was, bu- was it Buster Rhymes? No, so that it was, was Buster Rhymes. Was it? It was Buster Rhymes. There must have been. No, you're right. It, it was, was Buster Rhymes. Rhymes. There's a few different horror movies that had yeah, rapper Buster cameos. Rhymes. Yeah. yeah, except Buster Rhymes is like a main character in Halloween Six, which is yeah, yeah. he literally yeah. was. He did karate. <laughs> he beat the shit out of Mike. He kills Michael Myers in that movie, <laughs> and that's the last. That's the last canon movie of the original series until it was all retconned before for they Halloween started doing the branches. Yeah. Well, no, because H2O. no, that was the sequel well, to H Two O. Yeah, right? they, yeah, they because they did at the, the start, Jamie Lee Curtis dies, and then Buster Rhymes becomes the new fucking. <laughs> The new Jamie Lee Curtis. Was, they're like, okay, H two O. We need to like clear up the lore, get rid of everything. So they get rid of everything. They do H two O. It's fine. And then they're like, let's do a sequel to H two O. And then they kill Jamie Lee Curtis off in the first five minutes, and Buster Rhymes takes over and does karate and murders Michael Myers. And that was our synopsis of Halloween rebooted. Six. So that was Drake and Josh, uh, Theater Thug, episode season three, episode fourteen. Now we're gonna spin the wheel one last time, and see what comes up. Okay. Wow, Drake and Josh Theater Thug. How was it? How did you like Theater Thug? <laughs> All right, spinning the wheel. Bambi Two. Oh no, we're gonna watch Bambi Two. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I truly appreciate Netflix Roulette, dude. Drake and Josh Theater Thug, Bambi Two, and Future Thirty Eight. You already know what we think of those two, but let's see what happens with Bambi Two. This is already like ranked for us. It's go- it goes two, one, three in that order. We'll see. Where's Bambi two? We'll see. Disney Plus. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What well, else could it be? I should have figured. All right, let's end it. Oh god. Let's, let's do this. Let's go watch uh, the movie Bambi, Bambi Two. two. <laughs> Alright, we took our third spin and we watched Bambi 2. Connor, what is the plot of Bambi 2, if you could call it that? (laughs) Bambi 2 is a coming-of-age film. Uh, It takes place directly after Bambi's mom died. 
Uh, so rather than do the time skip like in Bambi 1, pretty much just picks up where after that early Bambi scene where her mom di his mom dies and Bambi is kind of, his father's trying to figure out how to raise Bambi since his mother died and Bambi learns what it means to be a man, basically. Um, yeah, pretty much. Some hunters come after him. That's pretty much it. Yep. So what did you guys think of Bambi 2? I honestly thought it was okay. It was it was actually good. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Uh, it looked nice for what it was. Even though it was digital animation, the backgrounds were, I think, hand-painted or very nicely digitally painted. It was. It was I think yeah. it was digitally painted, but it was like digitally yeah. painted. And they yeah. looked nice. The, the animation is very nice, especially for these Disney sequels. On the plot side, there is none. It's just Bambi farts around in the woods, and then he fights off some dogs in the last, like, ten minutes. He yeah, learns I mean, to... he almost gets killed by dogs, and then he saves... He, he learns to be brave. ...from dogs. And that's that's the whole arc, is learning to be brave, and... It's basically just a run-of-the-mill kids movie. It's Fox and mm -hmm. the Hound, but with Bambi, and less good. Yeah. <laughs> Bambi's dad is played by Patrick Stewart. That's cool. Yeah, Patrick Stewart did a pretty good performance in this, I yeah, would say. Definitely. Like, you know, I mean, Patrick Stewart basically just has to be Patrick Stewart for a voice role. And it's <laughs> more or less. Uh, His natural voice is just really nice to I listen mean, he, to. He was, he was given good material. I felt like you see that deer and the voice sounds natural with it. Like, it's obviously, it's Patrick Stewart, you know. Yeah. Insert some kind of Star Trek Next Generation meme here. There you go. That's Patrick Stewart. You might know him as the Bald Wonder. Yes, everyone the refers to him as man the Bald Wonder. The Bald Plan. You might know him from Picard 2020. You might know yeah. him from X Men 3. <laughs> I mean, I've watched a lot of these Disney sequels because my girlfriend always makes me watch them. Um, yeah, we watched The Hunchback in Notre Dame. I watched that too. It was bad. Was it the first one or the second, second one? The second one. Yeah, all the, the Disney sequels is, suck, like Aladdin two and yeah, Notre Dame two. They're very, they're very. The interesting thing about the Disney sequels is they vary in quality quite a bit. Like, there's some that are like I, and some that aren't very good. Uh, okay. Little Mermaid two and Bambi two are probably a tier as far as Disney sequels go. Hunchback sucks. Pocahontas two. Sucks. All, all I like of them how the only one that didn't get a sequel was good. Alice in Wonderland because it would have been too expensive. I think she yeah. did get a sequel, didn't Look, she? Did it? Look I don't think so. I'm almost Because Alice in Wonderland has sequel books that they would have had to base the movie on. And I think they would have had to like renegotiate rights or something. I it's thought also... Alice in Wonderland's public domain, dude. There's like hundreds of those movies. I don't think so because they were written in like the 40s, weren't they? Yeah, but there's so they might fucking movies. Oh, actually, they probably are public domain now because everyone makes fucking weird Alice in Wonderland bullshit. It's true. It is public domain. I mean, there's the Alice games and the fucking yeah. Tim Burton movies and all that bullshit. And yeah. Japan loves making... Japan loves Alice in Wonderland for whatever reason. It's true. There's like a thousand Alice in Wonderland mangas that come out a year. Yeah, it, it, that is weird. Well, it's because Alice in Wonderland created anime. It was the first anime. That, no, that makes Everything sense. What about Kimba? Kimba's a ripoff of that. Astro dude. Boy? Astro Boy's a ripoff of Alice in Alice Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland came out in, in 1951. Yeah, I know, but Snow White and Alice in Wonderland basically inspired the anime industry. Yeah, I mean, Weird. animation inspired the anime industry. I suppose, I mean, you have to wait till, like, it's... Alice in Wonderland isn't that much past World War Two. Yeah. And Japan was fucking decimated. I mean, a lot of so. the art style stuff is drawn from that, too. Like, Snow White and Alice in Wonderland have really big eyes and the okay. animation style. And right. Other, I mean, yeah, if you look at early like, anime, it's definitely highly inspired by, like, the works of Walt Disney and shit. Yeah, so I guess that makes sense. Makes sense. Regardless, um... I wouldn't call Astro Boy a ripoff of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> that was probably a little too far. It's probably <laughs> more inspired by... Like Superman and shit. Well, it, was anything. it was inspired by Superman, but it was also kind of a reaction to the nuclear age stuff. Kind of a yeah. So we got Godzilla idealistic too. version of a nuclear age where nuclear power was where? used for good instead of evil and Oops. all that. But that's off top from Godzilla. 
<laughs> Anyways, Bambi, <laughs> back to Bambi. Oh. Uh, I thought it was truthfully incredibly fucking boring. Like, it looks nice throughout, and I commend them for actually making this look nice. I'm like, Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. <laughs> or Aladdin 2. But 90% of this movie is just Bambi wandering around the woods and doing random bullshit. Yeah. And then he fights off some dogs. Like, I haven't seen the original Bambi in probably goddamn near 20 years. So I don't really know what happens in that movie, but this movie was basically just Bambi fucking around in the woods for a solid 90% of it. Yeah, basically. Right. I don't know, I thought it was it was cute. <laughs> it's the perfect family movie, really. I don't know about perfect, because there's things <laughs> that actually have a plot. This is literally just dicking around in the woods. Like, I don't, I won't call it bad, because I didn't think it was a bad movie. Like, it was well done. It's cute, it's fine, it's well shot. Your kids would probably, younger run. kids would probably enjoy it, but the plot is not engaging. Like, there were, like, two times we were, like, checking the timer to be like, how much is fucking left? We did check the timer, yeah. I mean, it's just, like, so yeah. devoid of anything happening. See, the problem is, it's really like Fox and the Hound, but Fox and the Hound has the conflict of, like, you know... The fox and the hound were friends, and they grew up. But anyway, yeah, it, it's well done. I wouldn't go so far as to call it bad. It's just incredibly dull at the same time. I feel like it's one of those movies they wanted so you could just put it on in for your kids, and it would babysit your kids for an hour or so. That's it's Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But like I was saying, it's basically Fox and the Hound, but Fox and the Hound has the conflict where you got... The hound who grows up and he has to start hating the fox. It's like a movie about prejudice. It's a lot of like dicking around in the woods, but there's actually like an underlying plot. The problem is, well, you do have like the mean deer or whatever that doesn't like Bambi. Yeah. That plot's very minor. So it it's is. It's not very really minor. an antagonist or much of a story to it. It's just kind of. There wasn't much. He's also really not a happens. threat in any way. Well, the payoff happens in the main movie where he beats the deer and gets the girl. Yeah, but, but they couldn't have that happen in this movie because right. that happens he has to come in the to first age. one. So, I mean, I yeah. guess if you really want to watch the extended cut of Bambi, you can pause it after his mom dies, watch this, and then unpause it. But <laughs> you also, you could just fucking three watch hour Bambi. Band edit. Yeah, you could. I wonder if that already exists, though. Probably. A Bambi fan of it, maybe. <laughs> There's always one person. I don't know, like, out of the three, I'd say not that bad. Anyway, because we hate ourselves, <laughs> we're going for another spin. We don't know what it is yet, so find out with us. Find out with us. Find out. All right, because Drake and Josh is short, we've decided to roll another one. Yeah, well, and uh, hopefully it's nothing too bad. So hopefully it's not. We've like, decided to give Grant go, get guest Grant another roll, and if he fucks us up, then we're gonna shoot him. Hopefully it's not the Godfather Part Three. Okay, here we go, spinning. Last chance, Harvey. Oh. Okay, read the description. In London for his daughter's wedding, struggling. Okay. Jingle writer Harvey Shine <laughs> misses his plane to New York and thus oh well fucking Oh it's on HBO nice oh cool Oh no nice roll for you <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole <laughs> Wait Should we just pretend? No. Do we veto it? No It's against the rules to re-roll. If we re-roll we lose our integrity editing dude Editing, no we would lose know. our integrity. No <laughs> yeah, we would know. lose we our would integrity. Know. We would lose the we integrity. We would know. We 2008, 6.6 uh, 6 out of 10. Last Chance Harvey starring... <laughs> I don't know who the fuck that is. Is that, is that Dustin Hoffman and oh, Emma no. Thompson? Dustin Hoffman, I thought he was dead. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> kill me, dude. Are you Here's a theoretical second spin. Blue Demon. The <laughs> Blue Demon Project is... Something about giant sharks in Antarctica. Attempted by a team of scientists. Well, Damn. Comedy horror. Okay. Too bad we have to watch Last Chance Harvey. We have to watch Last Chance Harvey. Wait. Alright, Grant, are you excited to do our last <laughs> spin of the night? <laughs> are we really going to just fucking redo? Oh, hi. Uh, we're here because we, we want to make a fourth uh, episode recording thing. Here we go for the first time ever. The Outsider, two hours. 
An epic s a story set in post-World War II Japan, chronicling the life of a former American GI. Actually, that sounds kind of interesting. 2018 oh, crime drama. Ooh. <laughs> I guess Look, our movie is the outside. I guess it's not Good Luck Harvey. <laughs> No, so it's what's good well, we have to look The Outsider. Oh wow, what an interesting uh, co concept for a film. I can't wait to watch it. What a good role we we had for the fourth film. All right, Grant, spin the wheel. This is our first roll. This is the first time we're rolling for that fourth movie after Bambi Two. So let's see what we got. Okay. No. <laughs> that is time. not Try English. Three <laughs> hours. Here we go. The hard ride. Is... While in Vietnam, a GI promises his oh, dying no. buddy that he'll take care of his <laughs> motorcycle baby. <laughs> Persuade the dead man's white girlfriend and the Indian leader of his motorcycle gang to attend the funeral. Let's hope we get something good. A man called Ove. Okay, just keep one more time. <laughs> The Tesla Files. The short, shortest way home. C.S. Lewis and Mere Christianity. <laughs> so here we are for our fourth and final roll tonight. The Ape. Midway. Coast of Skeletons. Shine a light. <laughs> 13 minutes, let's go. Dessert Games. I've seen this, it's British. Here we go. Power play. Is this, is this a pornography oh film? That they slip past the Amazon sensors? They're like, yeah, it looks like a fucking hockey. Oh, no. Come back down and try this one. I'd rather kill myself. I'd rather fucking kill myself. What is with all these 1970s? I didn't even realize movies were made before the 1990s. So here we are for the first spin. Mike Birbiglia. Thank Refresh. God for just... Did you see that goddamn Christian oh, that's shit? That's a comedy special, No, it's, bro. Yeah, it's the leveling. Just one more spin. One more spin. Noel? Ugh. Read the plot. Don't even Father me. Jonathan Keane, okay, a cold. Don't even time. <laughs> roll one more time. <laughs> Keep rolling. Color from the dark. Uh, Brewmaster. <laughs> the botany of desire. Spin. Piper. Sochanatha. Storks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dog impossible. Black cat. Everybody street. Drake and John. No, <laughs> Drake. Our light died. Let's do it. Let's we do it. So <laughs> we spun so many times. We spun so many times. It's a Spun so many times that not only the light died, but we looped back around to Drake and Josh. Bumping mics no. with Jeff Ross. <laughs> Jeff <No>. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President Helen Thomas at the White House. Love games? Again. Wait, what is uh, Having you. <laughs> Her favorite patient. Jen's pulver. Uh, oh, no. The list? Final girl, the proposal. Wolves Never. in the snow, crush, blowout. Ooh, Steven's at all. No, that, well, is it? Uh, Orgasmo is a devout Mormon living in LA, trying to raise enough money to go back to Utah. Oversized cops, the bad mother. Road sure. to El Dorado, the mouse on the moon. Inspector calls. <laughs> Jada <laughs> ballers. With the rock. Dwayne the rock. The rock, the rock. The rock. And Isn't that the? It's entourage with the rock. Isn't that, yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that the Entourage knockout? It's Entourage with football on the rock. It's on HBO. HBO. So, because of the length of Drake and Josh, we decided to take one more roll, do a little bonus here at the end. We watched Ballers Season 2, Episode 2, Enter the Temple. A show none of us know very much about. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, what happened in this episode of Ballers? In this episode of Ballers, Dwayne The Rock Johnson gets his prescription for Vicodin refilled, and then also his wife quits her job, but then also Dwayne The Rock Johnson tries to steal a client from another manager. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a pretty good summary, what, what the fuck is this series? You said it's basically it's entourage. like Entourage, yeah. It's yeah, about it's... a 30 minute <laughs> comedy drama. Business procedural produced by Mark Wahlberg. It's Entourage with football. <laughs> yep. It's Entourage with football. You have like <laughs> yep. the light archetypes of Entourage represented. Right. Um, I guess The Rock and his The Rock is like the washed up actor guy, kind of. Right. Yeah. Except he's more the main character than the washed up actor guy was. And his well, The Rock's is... more stern. Yeah. Right. The 
It seems like the little, like, uh, it seems more like the background characters followed the archetype of the Entourage guys more. Yeah. I guess you did have, you had the the dude from Hot Tub Time Machine. He was kind of the Ari. Yeah. Uh, he kind of had that, like, Ari vibe, and, and the rock was pretty much the rock, except intense and on Vicodin, <laughs> instead of, like, friendly and charismatic. Yeah. yeah. He was, like, charismatic and angry and on Vicodin. Yeah, and he threatened his doctor with a little look. Yeah, uh, it was really, uh, re- I mean, I-, I guess the best way to describe it is if you've seen Entourage, do you have an idea of what this show is? Yeah, it's got the same vibe as Entourage, uh, people just... There wasn't partying in this episode, like there is in every episode of Entourage, but they did mention that they are like the frat club management place and they mentioned all the yeah. girls and shit and they're horny and then the previously on trailer at the beginning that they had a party yeah with some titties so yeah, i yeah. mean it's even shot and a lot of like the actual like template of the show is pretty entourage this seems like a yeah a right. plot i could imagine seeing on entourage it's a little hard to gauge from this middle episode but i thought it was okay you know uh like like Connor said, it's very entourage. It's shot okay as all HBO shows are, except Game of Thrones got really fucking bad looking later on. But right, that's not relevant. Right, but very decently shot. Everyone seemed to be a competent actor. Had kind of that middle of the road drama kind of comedy vibe. It had some. It was like dry comedy. It definitely wasn't as overt comedy as Entourage, which I would say the main difference is. Yeah. Right. Really? Right. Uh, I don't know if this episode really pulled me in to want to watch more. Like, I don't care about football that much. And they, I feel yeah. like, they have even though scene. it's in the background and it's more about the business dealings, I still feel like it's something that would be more rewarding for people who give a fuck about football. Yeah, but I mean, if you only watch an episode or two of Entourage, it's like, eh. Yeah, it's the same way. It's like you kind of got to watch the whole season, I imagine. Like, if we started from episode one, it's probably more like... I mean, I'd probably get sucked into it for a while. I like The Rock, and it seems decent, but I don't have a lot of thoughts on it. But I don't think The Rock at his surface is a particularly... Like, he's not a bad actor no matter what, don't get me wrong, but... I feel like The Rock is at his best when he's just fun and charismatic, where here he kind of seems a little more... Serious. Serious. Which, it kind of is weird when The Rock is the straight man. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it was interesting enough as its own little thing, but I feel like with context it could have been better to, like, watch. But at the same time, I feel like it's not going to really matter too much if you do have context. I feel yeah. like this pulled me in a little, or like enough to be curious about a few more episodes. Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably give it a shot starting from the start, because there are things that are interesting. It might be a little bit dry for most people, I imagine. Right. But if you like football, you'll probably like it more. If you yeah. like Entourage, you probably will. <laughs> That's another thing I, I want to point out is, if you watch something like this or The League and you're not a football fan, there's always that moment in the episode, which is like six minutes of them like talking shop about sports, and you're like, oh, sports, I'm a (laughs) big sports guy myself. The league league got really bad towards the end, but most of the league you could kind of watch without football knowledge, but there'd be those times where they'd just sit down and talk about football for like six minutes, and they'd be like, they would like roast a a very specific player for like eight minutes straight. Yeah. They're like half the episode, they're like, yeah, he's trash at football. And I'm like, yeah. Sports. Know a lot about football. Yeah, that was like when they were, there was some like very they, minor subplot where they were trying to get some guy to sign to a team or yeah. something. And they were talking about all the teams and they're like, that's head coach Stevie Mike. And they're like, he's the greatest defensive mind in football. And I'm like, I have no fucking clue yeah. who this person is. The only thing I recognized was Green Bay. That's the only part of Aaron like, Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is straight and Broncos. But <laughs> which one's Aaron Rodgers? Which is the one that was like kissing out? his son or something? Are you calling out Aaron, Aaron Rodgers? Is the one who gets back massages from his like eight year old son and made a interview where he was like, I I really really like women, 
and the fact that he had to come out and say that is mighty suspicious if you ask me. It's he plays for Wisconsin. He's like the best player on Wisconsin. Makes the Packers good just by existing. It's he's mighty suspicious. There for years, or he's been with the Packers for years. They're phasing him out though because he's yes, like forty. He's, but yes, he's also a closet homosexual allegedly. Anyway, I think it was it was well produced at the very least. Good job, Marky Mark. Good job. Marky Mark, you did it again. You remade a show you made 20 years ago, except again. <laughs> nice job, Mark. Oh, good old Mark. Mark Wahlberg's like, this time I'm actually going to get a star you know about that'll actually have a career in the future. <laughs> and by that, they'll have a career in the future. I mean, The Rock will continue to have a career in the future. I'll and Time Machine might appear in another movie after this. He's been in so much shit where I see him, and he always plays the same character. Be, I'm always like, I roll his He can play a guest villain spot on an NBC sitcom. <laughs> he can get a Netflix special that gets featured for a day, and I'm like, oh, Hot Chub Time Machine guy. Yeah. So that was that was Netflix roulette. That was our roulette session, so thanks for watching. Wait. Oh, wait, we have to wrong. rank them. So, Grant, oh, no. as the special guest, so, Grant, as the special guest this week, yeah. rank the four uh, medias we saw. Let's see, I, what was the, I barely remember, what was we the second one? Future 38, yep, and Drake, then and Josh. Drake and Josh, Drake and Josh, Bambi, and then Ballers. Bambi Ballers. 2 and Ballers. I would say, up at number one, my like most tolerable one was probably um, Drake and Josh just because it was short and it was like something I watched as a kid and then after Drake and Josh Bambi 2 and then Ballas and then Future 38 because honestly Future 38 was just kind of really boring and I didn't really like it and Bambi 2 was well produced more so than Ballers all right, I'm going to go Ballers on top because it's something I could actually kind of see myself watching. Drake and Josh because it was moderately almost funny. Bambi 2 because it looked nice but it was boring as shit. And then Future 38 because it looked bad and was boring as shit. Damn, son. What about you? Connor? Um... It's the truth. <laughs> I'm going to go Ballers. Same reason as Aiden. I feel like if I was bored and I put it on, I'd probably keep watching if I could actually, like, start to finish watch it. Right. And I, you know, I don't know if I'd go out of my way, but it seems like something that if I got into it, I could probably watch pretty easy and see myself enjoying to an extent even if it's not super impactful right next i'd probably go <laughs> um it's a tough choice it is kind of tough because i guess i would do drake and josh next truthfully okay the thing about drake and josh is i mean i liked it as a kid there's a level of entertainment and for a child sitcom it has its funny moments, and it's not awful. Next, I would go with Bambi 2. It's a nice-looking movie. It's boring, but I think yeah. kids would like it, <laughs> probably. Like, kids probably don't care that it doesn't have much of a conflict or a plot. Right. Uh, and then Future 38. That thing just... The jokes were pretty much all sexual, just to be sexual. The movie was shot like shit. They tried to talk 1930s style, but they way overdid it. It's it's like blackface of 1930s talk, where it's like, okay, you're overdoing it. Maybe if it was like a noir detective film, I could see more of like that like fancy talk. Honestly, this should it should have just been like a noir detective homage right, and yeah. not a comedy. Maybe put some jokes in there or something, that's fine. Right. But when you have like a surface level, a set more or less plotless film, and you try to make it a comedy, but you don't also try to make it a comedy. Like half the joke is just that they talk like it's the 1930s and it's shot in a one by one point one aspect ratio, and there's no jokes and the jokes that are there are just blowjob and shot strap on, on one by one point one digitally. 
And the fact that for I mean, some Ghost reason, Story was shot one po- by one point one, but at least it was film. I'm right. still curious. I mean, and Letterbox or a fucking Lighthouse too. Yep, that was a movie shot on one point one one by one point one and had decent style, and was a good movie. This that movie just had so many issues. Um, why the fuck was Neil? De- what did that? It wasn't <sighs> scientific. Neil deGrasse well, Tyson was, was just there. It was meme points. He appeals to the Reddit audience. Exactly. It was Reddit. That's literally it. I'm guessing that movie was made by like hipsters in like fucking Salt Lake City, Utah. You need to do an edit of, Seattle. of Neil deGrasse. Seattle would be a good guess. Neil deGrasse turning around and then you just slowly zoom on him and slow the footage like by half so it sounds like he's drunk. So it's just like, hello and welcome. No, you to... just gotta dub him. You just gotta dub him over with funny shit. Do James Earl Jones saying? I'm thinking that black guy who's shit. eating the ice cream. Let's go. Niggers. He's like, are you ready for the experience? And then he turns back around. We now look back at a film that looks forward to today. Roll projector. Let's go. Niggers. Anyways, let me finish my thoughts. <laughs> I think I was done with my thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. It was a really good time coming to you guys. Surprisingly, we got four such good movies and only four rolls. Just four rolls. <laughs> Just four rolls. Just four rolls, dude. Anyway, thanks for watching. We already uh, said thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks this, for episode, post this episode featured our friend Grant the Hierophant. Hierophant? Hermaphrodite? Hierophant. Here's a link to his channel here or... Here. No, Up it's in not going to be in either corner. Where is it? Don't try this shit because you're not going to Stop moving it. Do it. Why are you moving the crop all around the screen? And now it's over you. The channel will be added to the end. Here's the end card. Here's the bubble for my channel. There's no fucking bubble. Here is the end card. and then <laughs> Here's the other bubble the for end my card. channel. There's oh. two now. <laughs> Dragging the end card over. Now there's Grant's channels there. And look.